Well, let's go uh, and look at something else the ABC has been up to lately because they're running a new doco. It's called Fight for Planet A, Our Climate Challenge. Seriously, I'm not making this up. And it's presented by one of the Chaser Boys. No, seriously. And yes, you're paying for it. Enough is enough. Australia, it's time to think about our carbon footprint. This is no longer an argument about science, but a case for saving the planet. Are you with me, guys? I'm not only very emotional, but... For some reason, the kids... <laughs> It's nearly enough to, enough to make me cry, I can tell you. Us paying for an ageing chaser boy to run activist propaganda and practise some of his old tricks. Just got a delivery for Al Williams. No, you need to go. You can't bring no, this here. These are the first six. There's 20 million all up. I need to get to Al Williams. Can you get Al down? I want to show our politicians just what all that CO2 looks like and find out how their plan for emissions reductions are going. Why? I'm carrying my carbon footprint around with well, me. This is that. an hour. Side-splitting stuff, but back to the propaganda. In the last six years, our emissions have gone up as often as they've gone down. We've made almost no progress. Almost no progress? Last year, this Australian National University study found that Australia is on track to reach 50% renewable electricity in 2024 and on target to meet its Paris Agreement reductions five years early. Sounds like too much progress to me. Anyway, what do everyday people think? We can't keep using coal because that is just going to kill our planet. We just cannot, we cannot do it anymore. Could you possibly run out country for us? Run the country? Well, the chaser boy forgot to mention this girl already has a profile. She's the 13-year-old who became the face of Australian activism. After footage of her being moved on by police at a climate protest outside Kirribilli House in Sydney went viral. We warn you that should you fail to comply with my direction, you may be arrested. Force may be used. Do you understand, Izzy? You need to leave now. Are you going to leave for me? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Ah, a young activist. And then there were these alarming claims. The Hunter Valley, north of Sydney, accounts for half of all black coal production in New South Wales. One person who's witnessed the effects it's had on the health of the local community is local GP Dr Bob Vickers. Borderline asthma result, but that could potentially get better with Ventolin. He's seen an increase in conditions like asthma and other respiratory conditions amongst locals in the town of Singleton and farms nearby. This is quite an increase here. Yeah, yeah okay. and that's, that's certainly uh, happened at the same time as expansion of open-cut coal pits. Oh dear, but they didn't mention a 2013 CSIRO study that found wood smoke is the dominant source of the fine particle pollution in the Hunter Valley, making up 62% in Musselbrook and 38% in Singleton. That's right, wood fires, not coal dust, are the main pollutant. Sloppy research? Or did they just happen to leave out an inconvenient fact? Oh, and that doctor, Bob Vickers? Why didn't they share his Twitter feed? Murdoch is dooming the human race. It's pretty effing impressive, to be honest, is one of them. Then he said the head of the New South Wales Minerals Council, Stephen Galilee, will be at The Hague for Ecoside by 2040. I'm calling it now. Or this one. This country is run by the Hillsong Church and Minerals Council. Dismantle it. Start again with compassionate socialism. Oh, so they hid that extremist background. I guess you need not bother with fairness or the ABC editorial policies when you're fighting to save the planet. Let's give you first go this time, Justin. Uh, there's all sorts of views on climate change, but there's no doubting the angle and the direction of propaganda, effectively, from the ABC. Oh, yeah, and there'll be propaganda on both sides. I, I don't think we should ever be afraid of the climate change debate. And, Chris, I applaud you for it, because uh, you're not afraid of it. You uh, you looked at what they had and you and you brought in your own facts and, and, you know, good on you for doing it. We shouldn't be afraid of it. But when you, don't, when you present... I... Sorry, uh, Justin, when you present people as uh, people in the street or medical commentators... Oh, yeah. You, you, should ex you should reveal their sort of extreme views, the fact that they are activists... 
Oh, yeah. And look, please allow me to, uh, having said that bit, la allow me to lay into the chaser crew. I, and look, I have no problem with humour uh, being used to uh, tackle serious subjects. We've had that for years and, and long may it continue. And I don't even have a problem with the ABC funding it. My problem is being lectured by someone from the chaser crew. They lost me years ago uh, with some of their antics. And one of those in particular is when they made fun of dying children. Uh, I, I think the morals of this crew have been laid bare uh, many times. And I, I tell you what, I'm not going to cop a lecture uh, from one of their crew ever for any reason. They certainly honest. do pretty well out of taxpayers, uh, Rebecca. But couldn't this money... The ABC squeals about lack of finances and the like. Shouldn't they be spending money on serious documentaries, looking at the scientific options on climate uh, policy, what sort of cost-benefit analysis is around the place regarding policy options and, and those sorts of serious issues, instead of getting comedians to front little propaganda pieces? Well, the problem is that the, there's just a complete lack of balance uh, at the ABC, and it's particularly marked on this issue. Earlier this year, Bjorn Lomborg was visiting Australia. Do you think, and uh, sort of named one of Time magazine's, you know, 100 most influential people and so forth, very respected internationally and done a lot of work in this area, the ABC pretended that they were going to have him on and then phoned him at the last minute to say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't have you on. You know, <laughs> it's always the same. And because what we see with this pandemic is that this same one-sided, apocalyptic approach really has real costs. And we've seen that very clearly, but the climate change costs are no less marked. It's just sometimes they put the dates out, sort of the due-by date for apocalypse a little further out, so it's harder to debunk sometimes.